In this video, I'm going to walk you through creating a card base from scratch with either perforated or solid score lines. Now I have my Sure Cuts a Lot 6 open here, and I'm going to head over to the left hand side where it says Draw a Shape. If you don't have a rectangle selected, click and hold this option here, and that will bring up all of these different shapes. I'm just going to select Rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Doesn't matter what the size is right now. Now, a standard A2 card is 4.25 inches tall and it's 5.5 inches wide. Now, that's when it's folded. So, to get the actual card base, we need to multiply the width by 2. 5.5 times 2 is 11. So, I'm going to select the shape here by using my selection tool. And we're going to go over here to the position and size panel, which is this little arrow. And again, we're going to set the height to the height of the card, 4.25, and press enter. You can see that it resized it. And for the width, again, we need to set it to 11 inches, because when we fold it, that will turn into 5.5. 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. So let's set the width to 11 and hit enter. Okay, so we have. 4.25 inches tall by 11 inches wide. So now we need to create the score line for the center of this. And I'll show you how easy that is. So we're going to go over here to the draw tool. We'll click once and then anywhere on your mat, go ahead and click once. And as you can see, it creates a node and then the line follows your mouse wherever you take it. And it doesn't matter what size we make it right now. Just get it close to the size of the height of the card. Now, one thing you want to do is right now you can see how it's kind of swinging freely. Go ahead and hold down the shift key. And you'll see that what it does is it doesn't allow it to swing freely, but rather it allows it to move in, I believe those are 45 degree increments. Yep, those are 45 degree increments. And we want it straight, and that's wonderful. It allows us to ensure that this is a nice straight line. We can go all the way over here and it'll still keep it straight. But once we get past about 15, 20 degrees, it'll start heading over to the other side. But we want it straight, okay? And now we can go ahead and click. I'm still holding my shift key. Now we can release the shift key. And now you see it wants to create another node, but we can tell Shortcuts a lot that we're done by hitting the escape key. And now we have a line. I'm gonna go back up here and click on my selection tool. And that selects, if it doesn't select the line, you can go ahead and click on it. And now remember, the card is 4.25 inches tall. Let's click back onto the, onto the single line. And we're going to change the height of that line to 4.25 inches. Okay, so now it is the exact same height as the card. And you can see here that it fits in there perfectly. And now you're asking yourself, well, how am I going to make sure that we get that perfectly centered. Well, it's very easy actually. So to get this line centered onto this card, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go under Edit and we're gonna select All. We wanna select the card base and the line. And then under the Position and Size panel here, this little arrow, we're gonna change this option to Selection. And what that means is that whatever we have selected is what we're going to be aligning. Now here we have the Horizontal Align. We're going to click on this middle one here, align to the middle horizontally. So watch what happens when we click that. Okay, so it took that line and aligned it horizontally to the card. And now we're going to vertically align it. And there it is. So now the line is directly in the center of our card base. Now here's what you can do. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's say I want this to be a solid score line. I'm going to go ahead and do a, another select all. So it selects both of them. And then I'm going to duplicate this. Okay. I'm going to go to copy and paste. So it creates another one. Because I want to show you how to do this with a solid score line as well as a perforated. So the solid score line version is done. I can go ahead and draw a box around both the card base and the score line using my selection tool. And I can right click and I can group it. And that's going to make sure that the score mark stays exactly where it needs to. Now I'm going to hide this for just a second by clicking on the little eyeball here of the layer that's selected. And now we're going to take this shape 
I'm going to draw a box around it using my selection tool and just move it up a little bit. And now we need to just highlight the line. Okay, you can do that by clicking there. Or what you can do is if you go under layers, now you can tell that this layer is hidden. This is our other card that we hid. Okay, and now here are the two remaining layers. One is the card base. You can actually select it by clicking here. And then you can tell that's the card base because it's pink. And this path here is our score line. So we can click on it here, which I prefer to do because if I accidentally click on it here and move it a little bit on accident, then obviously it's not going to be centered anymore. So you're better off clicking here so you don't risk moving your line. So I have it selected. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the fill and stroke panel right here. And you can see that you have an option for a line style. So right now it's solid, but you can easily change that to a score line, a perforated score line, by selecting one of these options. I'm going to select this one here. And you can see it magically converted that solid score line to a perforated line. Now I'm going to select that line again by clicking here. And what you can actually do is go under edit next to the line style. And you can change the length of the dash. And you can change the length of the gap between the dashes. Okay, so right now my dash is at a value 10. I'm going to change that to 20 and hit replace. And you can see what that did. It made the score lines larger. I'll click on that again, go to edit, and let's say we want to add more gap. I can type in 10 for the gap, hit replace, and you can see it increased the gap between each of the score lines. Okay, so now one other thing too. Now, if you were to go and cut this right now, this score line would cut all the way out to the edge here, which I'm not a big fan of. I think that you know might give it a not so good aesthetic. So what we can do is I'm going to lock the actual card base by clicking right here so that I can't alter it in any way. You can see here I'm clicking on it, nothing's happening. And then I'm going to grab, and actually I'm going to hide this just for a second. Okay, I can still see the score lines. I'm going to grab my eraser tool by clicking here. And I'm just going to erase these lines here. Okay, I can undo that one. And now you can see that it doesn't extend all the way out to the edge. And if you want to, you can click on the line again. And we can go over here to the position and size panel. And we can nudge this up a little bit. Now when I nudge this up, it goes way too far. So one thing you can do in shortcuts a lot is you can go under the main options here under settings, under edit, and you can change the nudge increment. Okay, so I'm going to change this to 0.1 instead of 0.2 inches. So now you'll notice if I nudge this down, it doesn't nudge it as much. Okay, and you can get even more precise. Let's say we change that to 0.05 and hit OK. And now when I nudge it, it moves less. So let's grab our selection tool and take a look. And that looks wonderful. So I can take off the lock on the card base now. With my selection tool selected, I'll draw a box around both of these elements, right click and group them together. And now I have a card base with a perforated score line. I can reveal the other one with the solid score line. So we have two identical card bases, one with a solid, one with a perforated. Let's go ahead and save this project. I'm going to go under File, Export, and I'm going to call it Card Bases. Save it to my desktop under the SVG format. You can also save it as an FCM file if you have a scan and cut that doesn't work with SVGs, but I'm going to leave it as an SVG. Hit Save, and then also just make sure that I have Design Space Compatible selected and hit OK. And that went to my desktop. I'm going to open up my Design Space. And let's upload. I'm just going to drag and drop my card bases that I just created. Hit continue and upload. And there it is. Okay, so now I can right click, ungroup this. And I have one card base and another card base. This one, since it's perforated, I can go ahead and attach it. Now, this one here, we're going to go under the layers here, select just the score mark. 
and go under operation and set that to score. Now when you do that in design space, it changes that solid line to a perforated line, but it will actually make it a solid score. It's gonna prompt you for either a stylus or a score wheel. And at this point, we can select this entire card base, hit attach, and let's click make it. Okay, and you can see here, this is gonna be the perforated one. This is the solid score, but again, Design Space changes the solid score line visually and puts little perforated markers there, but that will be a solid score line.